Hello and welcome back to All About Community. Again, my name is Robert L. Harris. I am your host. And when we went to break, I was talking with John L. Burris. John L. Burris is a legendary attorney right here in the Bay Area, civil rights attorney. Uh, John, you just announced a few weeks ago about the formation of a new law firm. I know you have a long history of practice <laughs> law, practicing law, and now you talk about a new law firm. Tell us about that. You know, I've been, since I left my initial partnership with Alexander and, and Harris, I've, I've been in private practice as a solo practitioner for 35 plus years. And in the course of that, I've had a number of lawyers who work for me and whom I've trained. Uh, to be lawyers, some of whom have gone off to start their own practice, but some left. And as I started thinking through my career, toward winding down my career, if you will, I thought it would be a good idea to bring in some additional partners uh, and let them understand how it is to run an office. So when I do leave, they will have the footprint will always have been established with them as to how to do the work and to capitalize on some of the work that I've done. So it, you know, it's, it's uh, Burris, Nessenbaum, Le uh, Curry, and Lacey. These are three people who have worked for me for a period of time, mm -hmm. uh, all of whom are individually very capable. I'm actually, to put truth of the matter, I'm very proud of the people I've trained down through the years who are all now sort of independent lawyers. Uh, you know, Dante Pointer is one of my major uh, uh, lawyers who has done very well, started his own law firm. But all these folks, and I've seen this as my mission, just so mm -hmm. you clearly understand this. When you and I were coming through, there were law lawyers, but no law firms of black right, lawyers. exactly. They all were individuals, and when they passed on, their, their offices passed with them. Exactly. Well, I, my vision always was to establish a firm that will transcend me, uh, my, the lawyers that I'm with, and it will be, uh, go on in perpetuity. So that's always been my goal. Mm -hmm. And so this is just an extension of that, uh, and aside from just training lawyers, but now I've put together a firm and it's my desire that that firm will continue on. I have an office, I have an office in Oakland, right. and I have an office in Los Angeles. Right. So the practice has expanded uh, uh, statewide. No, no, no. What are the areas, specific areas that you're going to, that you are focusing on? Well, as many may know, my primary emphasis has been for many years police misconduct. Right. Uh, police uh, uh, misconduct, as I have been involved in, and that's been. Uh, my singular and most important event now. Obviously, during the course of my career, I've done other things like employment discrimination, uh, criminal defense work, and some personal injury. But the focus of this firm is the transitioning into police misconduct work. There's a lot of work to be done. We've now gotten cases outside the state, a lot of cases in Southern California. And, and so there's work to be done. It's not just in Oakland. As you may know, I've done a lot of work in Oakland done a lot of positive work in terms of the police so, here in Oakland, but my, my vision is to extend that beyond the four corners of, of, of the Bay Area. So if somebody wanted to, uh, thought that they had a case that may be applicable to you, uh, they could go to your website, you have a website and all that stuff? Absolutely, we have a website, and, uh, and it depends upon the Southern California, Northern California, we'll direct you to the lawyers uh, that, that work best. So the objective is to, to provide services in this area. I'm really not interested in a lot of stuff that lawyers do. Right. That's just not my interest. My interest has always been civil rights, and more specifically has been involved in, in the police stuff. I've done employment, but I'm really geared toward representing people who have been mistreated and are killed uh, by, the police, by police officers. What drives your passion for this, this uh, kind of work? Kind of work? <laughs> Uh, this is a question I'm asked often. Because I remember you wrote a book, book called Blue Versus Black. Blue Versus Black, that's in the conflict between cops and minorities. I, and I'm often asked this question, and part of it is growing up, seeing the civil, the civil rights, rights movement, movement unfold, unfold on, on TV, TV and, seeing and seeing how the, how the police, police were treating the, the people, people who were trying, trying to get their, get their civil, civil rights, rights. And, and it stuck a chord with me. me. And then, and then later, later on, on obviously, obviously when I was in Chicago, Chicago you may not know, know this, but I was part of a commission called the Ralph Metcalf Commission, commission. and you know he was a congressman at the yes. time. But I spent the summer, one, one summer, summer, interviewing people who were beaten up by Chicago police officers. That's all I did. And so that kind of ingrained in me the type of conduct that takes place. Aside from the world at large, when I came home, 
uh, back, back here, here, you may know, you know I was involved in the case that most, most of the audience people would not remember, but <laughs> yeah, in 1979, a young kid named, named Melvin Black, Black was shot by the police. And all and the all big the cases, cases you hear about now, now this was the forerunner of all that. The tension was just as bad, the conduct was just as outrageous, and, and, and the community was up in arms over it. I remember. And so I was hired, surprisingly, uh, to be a special investigator to determine Mayor what Wilson was. Mayor Wilson hired, hired me, and the question, the question is, is, find out what happened. Now, it was very important because that was my sort of greening of America, if you will, greening of John Burris, because then I was able to understand it's just because, because the police said it so, so, don't make don't it, make it so. so. That's true. And so, and so I became a you know, person who was uh, uh, able, able to, to be critical, critical evaluation, evaluation uh, of these cases, and, and, and really, really, really uh, find my lane, if you will. And I've been very pleased with the work that I've been able to do. Every now and then I'll do some of the things, I've done that down to years. I would be pretty good at that once upon a time. But that didn't, that really didn't go to the heart of what, um, I, what wanted I wanted to do as a lawyer. lawyer. What? what? I didn't, I didn't go to law school ultimately just to be a lawyer. lawyer. I really I wanted to do something, do something as a lawyer. lawyer. I, watched I watched all the, all the, all all the men and, and women who were before us, us and, and I saw what they did, and I realized that what they did is not what I wanted to do. So they didn't have lasting impact. They dealt with their case. In many cases, they did stuff that lawyers do. But I always wanted to say, how can I make the situation better for others? We may never, never have known, known what, what has, taken has taken place. place. And we know, John, over, over the years that you have, have made, made the situation, the situation better. better. Uh, uh, when, when we, we come, come back, back uh, from break, break, we're going to go, go into, into some of John's uh, long history, history of involvement with our association and his passion for helping others. So don't touch that remote. We will, we will be, be right, right back, back with All About, about Comedy. Comedy. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it's Robert L. Harris. Harris. I am your host, host and my guest, guest is John, John L. Burr, civil, civil rights, rights attorney, attorney right, right here, here in the City, city Bowl. Bowl.